Welcome to the first of many webcasts you'll be watching for your anatomy lectures this spring for integrative physiology anatomy. My name is Patrick Hennessy and I'll be guiding you through these. Um, today we're going to talk about epithelium, which is what the lecture is going to be on today, and what its structure function is and some different characteristics about it. We're just going to go over the general stuff and you're going to discuss, or discuss more specifics within the lecture. Um, a couple of disclaimers, this is my first time trying this, so I might say um a bunch, and my handwriting isn't great. If you have any input on better ways of doing it, please feel free to email me at patrick.hennessy at colorado.edu. I think it should be in your syllabus as well. But please let me know, because um, it's my first time trying this. So we're going get, to get on to it, because I'm going to try to keep these short. Uh, first off, the general function of epithelium is to line cavities and surfaces uh, or to form glands. So lines, cavities, lines, surfaces. And it really lines the surface of the glands, but it, it, it creates glands, we'll say. Form, forms glands. Forms glands. These are three uh, key. Is, this is what the epithelium will do, um, generally. Uh, so I'm just going to hop right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is cell junctions. And there's going to be three of them we're going to talk about. Oopsies. First one is tight junctions. So I'll draw a couple of these right here. Uh, these are junctions that line uh, where cells come in contact with each other. So they're membrane proteins that connect these two cells. So this one line here is actually two walls. It's one wall of this cell and one wall of this cell where they come together. And what these provide is a sealing force between the two cells. So when we get into later on talk about the function of each cell, um, you need these cells to really be sealed together for the for a set of epithelial cells to create to uh, perform the right function. The reason that is is because say you have a set of cells of epithelial cells that are meant to withstand diffusion, so it's supposed to keep stuff out, like say your skin cells. You know your, your skin for the most part does not let thing, anything in. If you have a problem with your cell adhesion, specifically your tight junctions, um, anything's going to be able to pass through there, which you you don't want. And so one tight junctions and this seals neighboring cells neighboring or adjacent cells together and uh, so the molecules can't come through. We'll leave it at seals neighboring cells. Second one we're going to talk about is desmosomes. What these do is provide some structural integrity for cells. So whereas these tight junctions seal the two cells together, these desmosomes uh, form a very strong bond be in between the two cells. And they also have these fibrous connections that actually come all the way across the cell on both sides. So you can imagine anchoring these two outer walls together is really going to hold this the structure of this this whole cells together, this set of cells, so that they can hold their structure and perform their function without worrying about becoming torn apart. This provides a lot of tensile strength and, and uh, prevents against torsional uh, ripping apart of the cells. So we'll say desmosomes. Desmosomes. Sorry for the handwriting, it'll get better, I'm sure. Anchor cells together. Let's anchor, you know, instead of the seal. And provides structural integrity.
and the structural integrity here would be of the whole cell uh, cell system or cell set so it's going to provide structural integrity for all of these guys together I may have made it a little bit too crowded for this next one but we'll go with it final one I want to talk to you about is called are called gap junctions and what these are are actually little pores or channels so I'm draw these small. I don't want to draw them too small so you can't see them but and they allow for the cytoplasms to be continuous with each other and by continuous I mean that molecules can pass between cells so say you have a bunch of something over here that you need to go over here they can pass between these pores uh, in order to do that. So say you have another thing over here and you want them to come over here it can pass between them. And again those are called gap junctions that's for cellular communication or, to con or for I think that's the best way to think about it is cellular communication. And when you get into more of a nervous system or, or muscular junctions, oops, these are gap junctions, gap junctions. When you get into more uh, nervous system or, or muscular junctions, you'll see that these gap junctions are the fastest form of communication. Between cells, so it's faster than you know a, a neuron firing and provides a channel or doorway provides a channel or doorway between cells makes cytoplasms continuous makes continuous cytoplasms between neighboring cells Makes continuous cytoplasm. All right, a lot of stuff on this page, but we'll run through one more time. Uh, we can actually just go back and through it because we're going to hurry up here. I'll leave it here in case you guys want to pause it and, and review what we've got here. But I'm going to scroll down for this next part, and this next part we're just going to talk about some, uh, some characteristics specifically that all epithelial cells share. Come back to yellow here. Sorry. Characteristics of all or of epithelium. We'll leave it at that. First one is they display polarity. As you may recall from general chemistry, polarity has to do there is analogous to directionality, or there's two specific sides. So in this, there's going to be a draw a fake cell here. You're going to have a basal side, a basal surface. And this surface is going to face towards the body. So it's going to face inward. It's going to face uh, inward towards your body. And that's this guy. And then you're going to have, I'll switch the color here, an apical surface. And what this surface, this is going to face uh, towards the outside environment in case of your, of your skin or towards the lumen or canal or whatever this is the lining. So in the case of your intestines, this side would face towards the the lumen of the intestine or the inside of the intestine whereas this side would face towards the inside of your body so that displays polarity the second one is that they all have a basement membrane all have basement membrane this one's kind of an easier one to remember because it's got the word basement here. Oh, I didn't mean to cross through that. Basement. What this is, is it's going to be 
it's what anchors the epithelium to the underlying connective tissue. So we'll draw another cell here. I'll try to hurry up here. And down here, you're going to have a basement membrane that connects it to everything else. So it's, it's what connects it to the underlying connective tissue. Connects cells to underlying connective tissue. Connects cells to underlying connective tissue. A uh, third unique characteristic for all epithelium is that they have the ability to quickly, quickly regenerate, or they're constantly dividing. So you can think of your skin cells, you're constantly sloughing off and destroying skin cells. Ability to quickly regenerate. Regenerate. Ability to quickly regenerate or divide. This is very important. Um, all the friction that your skin feels, it needs to be able to slough off dead skin cells and make more. Um, the same with your intestinal cells. I use that as an example a lot because it's one that you can think of. Uh, your intestinal cells are, are constantly under abrasion and they need to be able to slough off and create new cells to, to make sure that your digestive system is working properly. And what this contrasts to is, uh, say, muscle cells or nerve cells. You don't just create new nerve cells. You can have uh, stem cells uh, that can differentiate to nerve cells, but your nerve cells themselves don't just divide rapidly. That's a, you know you hear that talking about a lot with people who are advocates of stem cell research. In contrast to nerve muscle cells, in contrast to nerve muscle cells, which do not. Sorry, do not differentiate quickly. Differentiate or divide quickly. Or at all, really. Once they're into a mature state. Fourth point here, I'm going to see if I can scroll down just a little bit here. is that they're avascular. So this is also in contrast to nerve and muscle cells. There's no blood vessels that are going directly to these uh, um, epithelial cells. So that one's kind of self-explanatory. They're avascular. A, let's try that again. Avascular. No direct innervation. Innervation. Test my spelling again. From blood vessels. They pick up a lot of nutrients from the connective tissue and just passive diffusion. And there's also saying there's, there can be blood cells running through epithelium, but it's not directly innervated, it's not an end point. Or and the final one I'm going to talk about here, and the end of, to end the video, is that they're innervated. There's no innervation from blood cells, but there's an innervation from nerve cells. So you can imagine your skin, innervated. your skin has uh, nerve endings that can transduce pressure into sensation or can transduce he heat into pain or heat into, I mean it could be pleasurable as well, um, but you have nerve endings, nerve endings to transduce force nerve endings to transduce force into 
sensation. I'll say force slash temperature into some sort of sensation. Alright, go back through and watch this maybe once or twice and see what I'm saying here and uh, you'll get a lot more covered in the lecture. And like I said, please email me if you have any input on how to do this better. And uh, thanks for watching.